start? Okay, good afternoon. My name is Yaniv. I'm the CTO for the Networking BU in Marvel, and I'm very excited to be here today. We have some really cool things to show you. And uh, let's start. So, year 2022. You probably know all this stuff. You, you've gone through it through all your presentations, but I had to put this slide so just to, to be just like everybody. But the main thing is that data is exploding and we need to find solutions. And the solutions are coming through new infrastructure, new technologies, and new architectures and new equipment. So one of the, the problems of these uh, uh, data explosion is that it's going, it needs to go all the way to the public cloud, be analyzed there, and come back. So that calls for a new infrastructure. The new infrastructure is the edge. The edge is driven by mission critical uh, applications that require low latency and fast response like health, health uh, organization operation and uh, automotive cars that needs to talk between one another. They, they require low latency for these applications. They require to do all the analytics in the edge. So you won't, be able, you won't need to send the data to the public cloud. And they, want, they require you to do the quality of service, all the uh, analytics inside on the edge. So that's a new infrastructure. And I show you how this new infrastructure calls for new equipment also, later on in the presentation. There are also existing infrastructure that is evolving. So example, the private data center, the enterprise data center that was uh, so prevalent like five, six years ago, everything is now moving to the cloud. However, the private data center still exists and still needs to be there for security sensitive applications, for applications that needs to run in the private data center. That calls for a hybrid solution. The hybrid, the hybrid data center is a, 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 a conclusion of uh, the private data center and the public data center. It calls for new co-locations that do internet exchange that needs to send some of the workload to Google and some other workload to, um, to AWS. So also here, you need to have equipment that is in the private, in the co-location, and in the public data center that is unique. One size doesn't fit all anymore. <coughs> There's also new topologies and new architectures that are emerging. Especially I want to show what, how the emergence of these topologies in the network storage infrastructure. So hyperconverged is the architecture that uh, was prevalent is now the, the majority of the uh, deployment, a CPU and storage devices attached to it directly. The problem with hyperconverged is that each time you need to increase the compute power, you also need to increase the storage. That doesn't scale. So we're moving to a disaggregated solution. And disaggregated, the compute and the storage are actually separated, and the data is passed through the network to between those two elements. For that, we invented the NVMe over fabric to run the RDMA protocol across a network, an ethernet network, and using these protocols to actually pass the packet without loss so the RDMA won't break. And we'll show how the equipment in the network needs to be adjusted to this type of uh, a new architectures. On top of this, after the, we disaggregated the compute and the storage, we built the composable architecture. The composable architecture says, instead of taking an SSD and a compute, we are now aggregating or composing pools of storage and compute dynamically and are, <coughs> and are building the network so each task gets its own pool and we can change dynamically these pools. For example, we started with one CPU and then we need a different type of compose. We compose it differently. Also, this type of architecture requires to analyze and to understand what runs in the network, how many resources are allocated, 
and how many resources are depleted in the network. And we'll also show how the switch needs to be very, very active here. So all these new technologies that I showed some examples in the private cloud, public cloud, the edge, and in the storage, uh, require, require changes in the equipment we do. I want to introduce to you here our Prestera CX devices that we just announced yesterday and we are now uh, showing at our booth. The Prestera CX devices is, um, is a family of devices, a portfolio that spans across multiple bandwidth and can address multiple markets. So <clears throat> we, are, we are now going to, uh, I will show you some of our unique features in this family and, and some of the members of this family. And we'll start <clears throat> by showing the full portfolio. Our portfolio spans from a two terabit device up to 12.8 terabit device. Each one of these devices is unique with a, a, separate, a different power consumption, a different uh, type of uh, configuration and capacity. However, there is commonality across, the, across this board of all these devices. First of all, they fit into multiple markets. Not, like I said, one, one, uh, one solution doesn't fit all. Each market has different requirements. For example, the edge will require lower capacity while the hyperscale needs the 12.8 terabit. The, the enterprise network will require lower port speeds, 10 gig and even one gig, and the, and the hyperscale will require 50 gig, 100 gig, and 400 gig ports. So by offering a full suite of solutions, we can address all these multiple markets. And I'll cover how come we are also uh, addressing each market separately. A solution that we are coming to market is built on 20 years of aggregated experience. And it's built on a pipeline that's been vetted and mature throughout the industry along the 20 years that Marvell exists and delivering network products to the market. So we are delivering a very field-proven application to the market. Also, in terms of software, the software and SDK are common across all these platforms. They share the same feature set, so if somebody needs to define products starting from a 2T, the same software is built and will help him to uh, adjust uh, to all the, the, the family application. Plus, we are also very happy to present that uh, the Marvel Prestera CX will run on top of Sonic. We are showing a demo in our booth today running Sonic on top of Marvel using ARM processors, our Marvel ARM processors, and I welcome you to come and see the, the demo running. We're going to also contribute that to the community once we complete all our test suite and we're going to open source that under, under Sonic. So I talked about the different market and I want to highlight what is the differentiating and what is the solution that we can address each one of these markets. So for the public data center, our Prestera CX devices support DCTCP, they support analytics, so very, very intensive uh, um, effort uh, was uh, put into enabling analytics in wire speed, supporting in-band telemetry, IOAM <coughs> inside the device. And we also uh, have the highest radix in the markets today. So these devices at 12.8 can support up to 256 ports of 50 gig that can scale down to 25 gig, 10 gig. This higher radix will also enable you to reduce the amount of layers. On top of that, I will show you how we can increase that radix even to up to 1,000 ports. In the private data center, the scalability is important, going from a low capacity to a high capacity. Security is very important, so we, uh, we did not compromise on any ACL functionality. We have many layers of ACLs that can apply, plus the features that enable you to, to protect your network. <clears throat> also on the virtualization, we, we support all the layer two and layer three virtualization protocols that, that can help you really address the need of the private data center. In the edge, we added programmability to our pipe to really enable 
the different kind of applications that are running in the edge. In the enterprise, we, we kept all our enterprise features in the device, including very detailed flow management. We can support hundreds of thousands of flows that are driving through the chip. And we also uh, kept our ACL engines in the device. On the carrier side, we can also address the carrier features through MEF, through, uh, through OEMs that we are enabling the device. We enable network slicing by, by adding uh, the features. And we also are showing PTP, packet synchronization 1588 across all the ports. <coughs> In the storage, I talked about the composable architecture, and we are adding here a feature that is unique to our devices. And I'll, I'll jump to the next slide to show you what that feature is. We call the technology SAFE. SAFE is Storage Aware Flow Engine. And the SAFE enables you to actually manage RDMA Q pairs that are running through the device. As this traffic that I showed you, the composable traffic is running through the network, it is very important to understand how much capacity each flow is taking in order to adjust the network routing to take to and, and to enable lossless traffic. Today, it is as, as people are defining and, con and configuring a, a, loss, a, a lossless network, lossless Ethernet network, you know that there are many parameters needs to be changed. The SAFE engine actually enables you to configure the network much easier and understand what's happening in the network. Also, the SAFE engine can be used as a generic flow management engine for applications like in the enterprise and in the private cloud. Marvell <coughs> is not only providing the network solution. We are in our booth. I, we are showing the, our end-to-end -end solution, including files and gearboxes that are complementary to the switch, including a <coughs> compute offering, our ARM-based processor, our, our uh, Thunder X2 that is now uh, in our booth and is showing a full ARM server compatible to Intel Xeon uh, devices. <laughs> We're showing uh, our storage solution, our end-to-end -end storage solution, starting from the SSD through our Ethernet converter to, to NVMe over fabric, through the switch, and going back to the server. And we're also showing our port extender solution. And for the port extender, I want to show you unique features that we added in our Prestera <coughs> CX devices. So the faster technology enables you to support a very, very high radix of uh, devices that includes uh, virtual output queues for the output devices. It includes, a, and it provides you in the end, the reduced number of layers in the network, the ease of the management, and in overall, the reduced cost of the total solution by almost 50%. This technology is unique to our switches, and I invite you to the, to the demo to see the details of this uh, uh, technology. All in all, we are also presenting in our uh, suite the first time, together with Ixia, a full mesh technology connecting our 12.8 through 32 by 400 gig ports showing no packet loss at line rate, running at all speeds. And this is the a first for Ixia and for Marvell, and we're very happy to announce that. All in all, we're delivering network technologies for more than 20 years, and uh, the Prestera CEX is a testament to that uh, technology and to this, uh, um, to this architecture. I invite you to come to our booth to see the, the, the Prestera CX, and uh, I hope to see you here. You can ask me any questions after that. Thank you very much.